Hi everybody, I'm Head Casey and welcome to Casey's Kitchen or Cool Beans Kitchen Crazy Kitchen Calamity I, I don't know, the, the name of the show doesn't matter yet but the point is we're gonna make some food so the first question when making some food is what are we going to make? Which always leads to the second question, well, what do we, what do we have? So let's have a look in the cupboard and figure out what we have. Looks like we've got some wraps, so we're going to be making burritos. Yay! Let's see what we're going to put in our burritos. It's got to be something. What's this? we got chili beef. Yay! Chili beans and beef and yay! It's gonna be a burrito! Do we have... what do we have in there? In, in here? We have... Lettuce! Lettuce is a classic thing for in a whatever. I'll put the ingredients over here so you can see them. We've got wraps. We've got lettuce. We've got... Beans! And beef! Chunky beef and beans. Wow! Now we need some tomatoes. 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 There we go. Some diced Italian tomatoes in a can that doesn't have an expiry date on it. And I don't know how long it's been in there. So, hooray for experimentation! Yay! And in the fridge we of course have cheese! We have strong and bitey cheese! We have tasty cheese! That doesn't seem like enough cheese! How much more cheese do we have? We have mozzarella cheese! We have shaved parmesan cheese! That doesn't seem like enough cheese! What other cheese do we have? What's, what, what's this? What do we have in here? Swiss cheese! I think it might be Colby cheese! Wow! It seems like too much cheese. We have a lot of cheese. We need more meat. What meat do we have? We have this and that. Alright, so this if you're in New Zealand, it's called Luncheon. But if you're in Australia, it's called Devon. I don't know why, but you, you get the idea. It's, it's like little meat slices. Sandwich meat. It's sandwich meat. And this, what is this? This is honey leg ham. Oh, ham. Ham, girl. So now we've got all the ingredients in a big pile. Let's start cooking some food! Yeah! So you're gonna need a couple of things, probably, like a like a cheat, like a great like a chopping board. Put the lettuce, put the lettuce on the chopping board. There you go, now, now you're ready to chop up an entire lettuce. I probably won't use the entire lettuce, that seems a bit ridiculous. Um, what else do we need? We're going to probably have to pre-cook the meat and the beans. I don't know about these weird tin of tomatoes, so we'll just play it by ear. Probably have to grate some of the cheese. Um, sauce! We need sauce! How about a variety of sauces? We have tomato sauce, also known as ketchup. We have barbecue sauce, also known as Barbecue sauce and chipotle barbecue sauce for those of you who like a little bit of extra spice like me, Head Casey. Right, so now we've got a bunch of ingredients. Let's put all of our ingredients together in a big pile. Step one, assemble all of your ingredients. And now we've done that, so step two, I guess, is put it all together into a thing. I don't know, but let's go find out. I'm going to cut the camera angle here and cut to close-ups of making the food. So let's go! 
All right, so here we are with our big pile of food. First thing we're going to do is get a bowl to put the, the chili beans into. So we're going to open up this chili beans. Probably should have shaked the tin first, but not, not always required, so I guess we're not doing that this time. Empty the container into the thing. Sometimes it doesn't all want to go. You can smack the tin around, give it, give it a little bit of a shake, you know. You can look inside the tin, there's still a lot of guff in there. Definitely, definitely should have shaken this up ahead of time. So, lesson, lesson learned. Um, pro tip, if you're ever making a tin of chili, beans and beef, stir it all up first, give it a good shake, and then you don't need to do too much shaking it after the fact. Alright, I'm just going to shove the lid back in there. Okay, now we've got that ready to be microwaved. Now we've got the, uh, the lettuce. So what you probably want to do is just pull off some random chunks of lettuce. Just get some nice big, big chunks of lettuce. Um, see there's a couple of little like brown bits on the lettuce. You want to try and avoid those if you can. Um, probably, probably get rid of that bit because you can you can break it and, and get the bits that aren't so brown, you know. All of the lettuce is good as long as it's not all dodgy and brown, so just throwing that bit in the bin. What do we reckon? Enough lettuce? How many rats do we have? Eight rats! Gonna need a bit more lettuce. So now we're gonna grab a, another big handful of of the lettuce and just, just keep kind of just shredding the, the lettuce layers down until you're happy. Ah, oh, this lettuce is just falling apart, but that's that's fine, that, that happens. Right, now you can see you can see here on the end of this bit of lettuce, it's a bit it's a bit shoddy around the end, so you can just just rip that off of there, that's that's fine, and then and now, now we've got a big pile of lettuce. So now there's another step involving the lettuce, and that is Rinse the lettuce! You probably want to rinse the lettuce, you know, just in case there's any any extra guff on there that you don't want. You can use a metallic sieve and rinse that lettuce and then give it a little bit of a shake and then put that down for a minute. And then we're going to take our beans across to the microwave. Why doesn't this want to sit still? Oi, just sit, just sit there. Alright, now we're going to go take the beans to the microwave. Wait, that doesn't seem like the next step. We're going to figure out the next step. The next step is prepare your cheese. So we've got a couple of cheeses that are already in bags and pre-grated and stuff. But you'll have a couple possibly that are in little blocks. So what you're going to want to do is find yourself a cheese grater so that we can grate this cheese. It's going to be great. So we can make use of our chopping board again because we haven't chopped up the lettuce yet. So we're going to use the chopping board to chop up the lettuce. We'll come back to the cheese. God, I don't know how to do a cooking show because this is a first attempt. So you could use a knife to chop up your lettuce or you could just tear it into bits. Whatever, that's, that's fine. Just tear it into bits. Just rip it into shreds. Hey, look at that. We've got a bunch of lettuce prepared. Hooray! Oh, look at all of this delicious lettuce. It's great. You know what, I'm just going to put it all back into the sieve. Put it all back into the sieve. And now we've got our chopping board ready for cheese. Great! There you go, broke up all the lettuce. Now, now we can prepare the cheese! Hooray! So the first thing you want to do when you pull a cheese out of your fridge is inspect the cheese. Does it look okay? Does it smell okay? It's probably okay. Now if you find any funny bits on your cheese, you probably want to chop those off. And if you don't find any funny bits on your cheese, it's probably okay. And now if your entire cheese is funny bits, you might want to just throw away your entire cheese. You don't want to use bad cheese. A bad cheese can make a bad meal. Mm. So we're just going to grate some cheese. It's going to be great. Grating up a bunch of this. I forgot what kind of cheese this one was. I think it was a Colby. Let's, let's have a look at the packet. I think we're done with that one for now. Yep, Colby. Colby cheese. So once you've finished grating your cheese, you figure out where your cheese bag 
Wint, put the cheese away, try and get the air out of there. The air makes things go bad, so you want to try and get as little oxygen remaining in the bag as you can. And then you're going to move on to your Swiss cheese. So if you've been using a very small grating board like I've been using, very small chopping board, you probably can just move, move your cheese along and, and put another layer of cheese next to it. Then you'll have two piles of cheese. Won't that be nice? Now this Ziploc bag has a little, little zipper thingy on it. It's a much fancier Ziploc bag than the Colby had because Swiss cheese is a fancier cheese than a Colby cheese. That makes sense. That's my excuse. I'm sticking with it. And then you just sort of grate the cheese, prepare in a bunch of cheese. If you're like me, then you love cheese. And if you're not like me, that's fine too. There's very few people that are entirely like me. If the whole world of the world was people like me, then we'd have a very messed up world. So don't be afraid to be an individual and shake up your design with your food. Everybody likes something different, so just make whatever you uh, you like the most. Right, we've grated up a bit of Swiss Swiss cheese. Put it back in its bag. And now I think we're ready to move on to eating the meat. Okay, let's. So these meats are, are lunch meats. So they're it's leg ham and uh, luncheon. So or Devon if you're Australian. So we don't really need to heat those ones. It's more about heating up our our chili because. Apparently the chili needs to be heated, and always follow the instructions on your tin of chili, if you want. So we come over to the microwave, take our bowl of chili, put it into the microwave, close the microwave. Now we're going to cook it for about a minute, and in one minute we're going to stir the chili, and then give it another minute, maybe even two. Who knows, the instructions were super vague, it's like, Cook for two or three minutes and then stir it and then make sure that your chili's all good. Yep, classic tin of chili. So, there we go, we're waiting for the microwave to uh, finish heating up our chili and then we're going to give it a little stir. Oh, it's going to be great! Uh, so, you're going to want something to stir it with. So, I'm personally going to use a fork because why the fork not? Uh, okay, so. Moving the camera around isn't the best option because my tripod is a bit dodgy, but we're going to do it anyway. Yay! Yeah, woo okay, seven seconds. Seven seconds it says, which is probably about three now. Two, one, and there's the, the microwave. Okay, ow, ow, ow. The bowl is hot, be careful when the bowl is hot because you don't want to get burned fingers. So now we're going to stir it up. Stir up this bloody chilli. Oh, it's looking pretty good. I'm not sure if it's going to be a spicy chilli. Although if it is, we might not need that chipotle sauce after all. But we'll, we'll figure that out in a minute. Stir it all up, stir it nice and good. Okay, touch the plate, ah, it's hot. I recommend using oven mitts. Cook that for another minute. And now you've got a fork covered in sauce. So you can test out if that sauce is spicy. Tastes like chili. Who would have guessed? Right, so we've prepared our cheese. And we've prepared our lettuce. What else did we have to prepare? Let's go find out. So, I was just looking in the fridge and I found a secret bonus ingredient. Mushrooms! So in this bag here, I have some sort of white mushroom. Wow! And then in this other bag here, I've got some sort of brown mushroom. Wow! So, I'm going to make us some mushrooms to go into the thing, because why not? So to prepare the mushrooms, we're going to want to chop them up. Just want to chop them into little little mushroomy bits. I don't think this is the best knife for it. I'm going to see if I can find a better knife. Hang on one moment. Let's have a look through my knives. I'm going to try this giant, giant knife. It's an even bigger knife. Let's see if that does the trick. 
These mushrooms are very tender and delicate, so you want, you want to be careful with uh, which sort of knife you use. This one seems to be doing the job a lot better. So we're going to happily chop up these mushrooms into little, little mushroom bits. Careful not to chop off your fingers when playing with knives, because obviously, you know, that happens and we don't want that to happen. Right, so we've chopped one mushroom up into these, these little bits, right? Now what we're going to do is we're going to chop it in half again. So we're going to chop this mushroom into, into little halves, okay? Now if you run out of space on your chopping board, what you're going to want to do is have one of these. Some sort of crazy mushroom cooking dish. Um, and you, we're just going to put the mushrooms in here, okay? So we're just going to take the mushrooms and, and pack them into this, this little container. It's going to be great. We're going to slowly fold this container up with mushrooms. So, if you like mushrooms, that's great. And if you don't like mushrooms, too bad. You can just skip this step. It's very easy to skip parts of YouTube videos. But um, right now, we're, we're filling up the thing with mushrooms. And anybody who's watching who didn't eat before watching, uh, that was your mistake. I ate before cooking because you never want to cook on an empty stomach and you also never want to watch a YouTube video about food on an empty stomach. So now we're chopping up this big brown mushroom and it's sort of just disintegrating but you know that that happens. Now to go into this container where I'm putting all the mushrooms we're also going to want to add a small amount of butter and also a small amount of wine. I believe you want to try and get some sort of drunk mushrooms happening. And that's not the name of a band yet, but it should be. The Drunk Mushrooms. I'd go and I'd see them play. So I'm just going to pause here for a moment and go and get the butter. And I'll be right back. Now as I said, you're going to want to put a small dash of wine into the bottom of your little magic mushroom bowl. So here's, here's, a, here's a, a cask of wine. I've got a, a 4.5 litre of wine. Don't ask me why, you might find out in a different video. Right, so we're just going to put a dash of that in here. There we go, just a little bit of wine in the bottom of the mushrooms. And now it's time to add some butter. Okay, so we've got the, uh, the butter here. And we just want to take a couple of small slithers of butter. So I might go back to using the, the small knife from earlier. See, it wasn't a, a waste to get that out, it turned out that was fine. So we're going to chop a little bit of the butter, just a little bit, pop that in there, that's fine. Grab, grab a little bit more butter, sure, why not, just, just a couple of little slithers. And then we're back to putting the mushrooms in. So we want to get this mushroom in there as well, because it might look like we're filling up the container, but mushrooms shrink when they're cooked. So adding a little bit of extra mushroom, more than you think you need, is actually the exact amount you need. Especially if you really like mushrooms, like me. So we're just going to shove the mushroom into this little container. And just keep squishing it in there, it's, it's, it's fine. Mushroom can handle it. We just want to keep chopping them up into little, little mushroomy bits. Shoving it in, it's going to be great. Just wait for it, it's going to be so good. I'm going to just keep, keep trying to fit the mushroom in there. Running out of space in the container, but that's that's okay. It can it can overflow just just a little bit, maybe. Um, try and fit these smaller bits in here because they they can fit down the the little edge. It's going to be great. Just shove shove as much of the mushroom in there as you can. Maybe just give it a little little squish down. Don't don't worry about it. It's mushroom. Right, we've got all the mushroom in. The mushroom's in. We're, we're happy with that. We're going to add another slither of butter. We're going to put another little slither of butter right on the top. It's going to be great. There we go. Just add a little little slither of butter there. And a bit of, bit of butter over, over there. Right, now we want to glad wrap this thing. So I've got some cling wrap here. So let's just clear the battle station for a moment. Right, cling wrap, how does that work? You, you sort of, you, you pull it out, and then it sort of rips off with this metal thing there. Doesn't, doesn't usually go so well, I don't know. 
Now we want to sort of encase this in the glad wrap. And we want to do our best to sort of air, air tight this. We don't want the air to be escaping, so there we go. We've got it nice, nice and airtight there. Glad wrapped up. Kind of airtight. I don't actually know. It sort of seems to be coming up a little bit at the at the bottom here. There. Get get in there, you. Right now we want to microwave it. Oh God, our chili beans are still in here. Oh, ah, and they're hot too. Right. Now we're going to want to stir those chili beans because they've been sitting there for a little bit. Completely forgot about those. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Just stir them up. And then in about 16 seconds we can check on the mushrooms. Right, so we're just going to put this chili aside. Don't worry about it. And now it's almost mushroom time. Yay! Now we're having a look at the mushrooms to see if the butter has melted. The butter has about half melted, but it hasn't completely melted yet. So we're going to give these mushrooms another 30 seconds! Ah, oh, the lighting was terrible there. Another 30 seconds! Yay! And now you all understand why I'm getting fat. Because of all this bloody good food that I'm making here. Right, the next step while you're waiting for your mushrooms is... Getting your tortillas ready. Your tortilla wraps. It's gonna be great. So we're gonna we're gonna tear into these somehow. Damn it, microwave! I'm not ready yet. I'm still trying a tortilla over here. Right, we're gonna put a tortilla there. Get rid of the weird little sachet that comes with it. Right now, we're gonna go get those mushrooms. As you can see, the mushrooms have shrunk down a little bit and they're, they're all just sort of simmering they're all just sort of simmering in this little container so that's perfect that's that's exactly what we want we're just going to let them sit there and sort of just steam in their own heat for a little bit it's going to be great so now we're going to go on to the next step so the next step is actually making your tortillas so you want to make sure that you've got all your cheese ready you've gotten everything else ready we forgot to open the tin of mush the tomatoes so we'll, we'll come back to that in a moment. So you've got your, your base, and you've got your chili. That's what we're going to use as sort of the, the main part of the dish. So we're just going to smear some of that in there. It's going to be great. Now it occurs to me, because this is quite saucy, that we might not actually need the additional sauces. Now if I was only using the lunch meats, then the sauces would come quite handy because um, we, we, the sauce, the meats, they don't have any sort of sauce or flavour. But since we're just doing a sort of make it up as you go along, we're just going to make it up as we go and see see how it all turns out. So we've added our, our chili beans, half a slice of the luncheon or the Devon. We're adding a little bit of the uh, leg leg ham. Sure, add, add some ham to it, why not? And now we're going to add a bunch of cheese. So this was the Swiss cheese, I believe. So we're going to add a little bit of Swiss to this one. Put on a little bit of Swiss. I think this was the, the Colby. Add a, add a little bit of Colby, sure, why not? Now that's looking like a, a, a bit of a thing. We're going to want to add lettuce. Shove some lettuce in there, sure, sure. Some lettuce will be good. Right, put some, some lettuce with it. You can go a bit heavy on the lettuce, because the lettuce sort of provides a bit of crunch and, and holds the whole thing together with a little bit of a crunch, and it also gives you the illusion that you've made something healthy. Now, we've got these mushrooms here, so we're going to want to open up these mushrooms, give them a little bit of a stir. Ooh, I can smell this mushrooms. Ooh, it smells so good. If you like the smell of mushrooms. Now, we're going to want some sort of a, a spoon, probably, to get the mushrooms out of here. Now... We probably added a little bit too much butter, based on what I can see in here. I can see the, the butter's all dribbling around. You can just get like a scoop of butter straight out of here. So I should try and come up with something else I can do with this sort of uh, a mushroom sauce that I've created here. Because uh, it's, it's, it's a bit mushroomy. Right, so we've added some mushroom. Now we should probably open up this tomatoes too and see 
see what it looks like here with these tomatoes. It doesn't want to open. I'm going to use a spoon. Handy trick is if you can't get the thing, you can use a spoon and the spoon can open the tab for you. Right, now this is looking awfully saucy as well. I was hoping this wouldn't be too saucy, but it is. Why am I not? Why am I surprised? Right, so because this is incredibly saucy, we're just going to put a little bit of, of tomato in here. Because otherwise we're going to end up with a ridiculously saucy, saucy wrap at the end. And we don't want our wraps to be too saucy. Just, just saucy enough. So we've added tomato, mushroom, lettuce, cheese, and that's basically you know, meat, you know, and now, now we're going to sort of fold it up. So how I'm going to fold this one is I'm going to start up here, and I'm going to fold it on the side, and then I think I'm going to fold it on, on that side, and then I think we're going to fold it from, from the bottom, and sort of make it into a, a bit of a pocket, you know. I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to fold it this way, actually. And then, and then you can sort of roll it over, and there you go. You've got a bit of a, a burrito, a burrito pouch, a bit of a burrito pocket. So we're just going to put that onto that plate there, and now we have to make seven more. Now we're going to use various variations, you know, different cheeses and other bits and bobs. It's mostly just the cheeses we're changing up because I've determined that this is going to be saucy already, so we don't need to actually use the sauce. Now, normally I would use the variations of sauce, one with ketchup, one with barbecue, one with chipotle, and so on and so forth, but because of how saucy the whole thing turned out to be, we're just going to just roll with it as it is. So, I'll put those sauces away, and we're going to grab a couple of different cheeses, and some, some more meat, because, sure, why not, meat eaters, We've got beans, cheese, and meat, I mean, that's... Last I checked, that's a burrito, so looks like we're getting a bit low on the leg ham, so I'm going I'm to take it easy on the leg ham. So there you go, a bit of that there, and a bit of this here, and put that back in its bag. Now we're going to go with this. Now these are cheese slices, so you can just put a slice of cheese there, and then you can pick a different cheese, like this was a strong and bitey vintage, so Parmesan is also a strong cheese. So what we're going to do instead is mozzarella, because it's a bit of a, a stringy cheese, but it's not a very flavorful cheese. So we've already got a big strip of flavored cheese on here, so now we're just going to drown it in a bit of mozzarella. And the mozzarella should add a, a nice cling to the cheese of the whole thing, make it all nice and... Now there was a hair in there, disgusting. Normally, you tie your hair up when you're making food, but I left mine down because I thought it looks better for the camera. Right, we've got a bunch of cheese. Now we want to add lettuce. Of course, lettuce is good. Why wouldn't you want lettuce all over your thing? Let's just add some lettuce to this thing. Right, lettuce. Now we're going to do some more mushrooms. So we're going to scoop these mushrooms out of their little mushroom bowl and sort of try and spread them out evenly throughout the burrito. One at the top, one at the middle, one at the bottom. We could probably fit one more in there, come on. And there we go, now we've got some mushrooms. And now we're going to add some tomato. And again, the tomato is a bit sloppy, so... I'm not sure I thought this one through. I also didn't test the tomato to see if it was any good before putting it on there, so... We're already two burritos in, two down. I guess I'll give it a quick try right now. Mm. Mm. Yep, it tastes like tomato. So, I guess that's, that's fine. Alright, and then we're going to want to wrap it up. So I'm going to start on this end. I'm going to wrap on that end. I'm going to wrap on this end. And then we're going to try and sort of just... Oh, no, that's all falling apart. I've overfilled this one, maybe. Maybe I can fold, fold this up. It's all this lettuce. Too much lettuce. Right, fold that there. There we go, we've got another... This one's a bit deformed. How did I bugger this one up? I got the first one so nice. And then this one's just turning into a schlop. Right, too bad, it's done. 
we've got another one there, and so on and so forth until you have eight. And that's how you cook a burrito with Casey. Stay tuned and subscribe and whatever else you can do to sort of promote doing doing me and my videos. And uh, oh, we're gonna. Uh, why doesn't the tripod like me? Anyway, thanks for watching. Burritos or Casey something. The Cool Beans Kitchen. I I don't have a name for the show, but thanks for watching. And I need to clean up a big mess once I finish making the burritos. Thank you for watching. Bye. Okay, I know I said goodbye already, but I admit I bugged it up. I forgot to do the part at the end where I explained the end. Like I was an idiot, and of course the chili beans already had tomatoes in them. So I barely used any of the the tin of tomatoes I opened. That was too saucy, too messy. So I'm going to glad wrap that and put that away in the fridge for a different meal at a different time. We'll figure that out. And I've made my giant plate of burrito pouches. So we've got a bunch of burrito pouches. Used all of the meat, a bunch of cheese. Now the final trick was this. Because some of you are wondering, Casey, I like my cheese melted in my burritos. Me too. So what you do now that you have eight burrito pouches, is you just take one or two, put them on an empty plate, pop them in the microwave, heat them up for a minute, maybe, maybe a minute, maybe two minutes, no, it's too long. Don't overcook your burritos, just long enough for the cheese to melt, and then, burrito pouch. So that's how you make a burrito pouch. Thanks for watching, this was the actual conclusion. Sorry I said goodbye a minute ago, but you're actually getting your goodbye now, it's a minute later. So thanks for watching, subscribe, all of that, okay, thank you, bye!